Good afternoon, and welcome to this session of the Queen's Roundtable. I'm Evangelist Prophetess Valerie Ammons, and I am so glad that you've chosen to break bread with me today. And we're going to have an exciting topic and an informational topic. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to go to the throne. Almighty God, in your precious Son, Jesus' name. God, if and when we said something that we misrepresented you, God, we repent right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for being a forgiving and a forgetting God. God, we lift up all of your children all over the world. God, we lift up UPTV, we lift up the Queen's Roundtable, and God, we lift you up because you said if you be lifted up that you would draw all men unto you. And God, we give you praise and the honor and the glory that you richly deserve. And we thank you for loving us unconditionally. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And again, welcome to the session. I have uh, on the phone my dear friend from greater than 30 years, uh, Mrs. Cherry, Delphine Cherry. And she was on our show before, and she was talking about um, gun violence. And she has lost two children, her oldest daughter, Thaisa, and her youngest uh, child, which is was her only son, Tyler, to gun violence. And we're going to be talking about that today because Black Lives Matter, and we need to get all of our children in a spot of safety, and this is why she's here. So, Mrs. Cherry, I'm um, going to allow you to just take over right now and tell us some of the things that you've been doing and uh, some of the things that you're hoping to accomplish and, and about your uh, march tomorrow. Hi, Valerie. First, I want to give honor to God. And thank yes. you for having me on the show. Um, it's been devastating. Um, yesterday was Tyler's birthday, and I still have a hard time dealing with it. Um, my children were 20 years apart, and they were shot 20 years apart. Um, I was told, I couldn't find myself what to do. I asked God, you know, what can I do? You know, I want to lay down and die. And, you know, he told me I had to get up and fight. So I didn't know what to fight about. Yes. And a, a policeman from Country Club Pills, he said, don't think you're not going to ever find out who killed your son if you lay down and not do anything. So what came to mind was a march. Because on the south suburbs of Chicago, we don't have the media exposure about our young black people getting yes. killed out here. Yes. It's kind of swept up under the rug and forgotten about. So I told myself I was going to put a march together to make awareness of what's going on in my community and every other community out here. Um, we have lost Two more young men who mm -hmm. been since my son passed away in just this neighborhood alone. Um, China passed a bill with the Brady campaign so they can do more extensive background checks. That it won't be so easy for them to track it. Yes, them absolutely. Indiana, Michigan, and Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They're easy access. And then I was thinking, you know, I have a statistic that it costs for one death in America or in Chicago, it was no long. It's four hundred and twenty one thousand wow. dollars for one death. Indirectly and directly, including, you know, the law enforcement, the mental expenses, court costs, prison, and of that eighty one percent is paid by taxpayers. So we're paying seven hundred and thirty eight dollars out of our tax dollars mm -hmm. on somebody killed. So we need to really turn the gun violence. Um, right. I'm excited about the march. I can think I can pull it off, but by God's grace, it's going to happen. Yes. Um, and it's, it's in honor of giving the foundation a start, because I did start a foundation, Tender You, which it's not so much as helping the victims that's already gone. I want to be able to do something for their parents, their loved ones, their sisters, their brothers. You know, I, I get a lot of calls about people can't bury their children after they, they die. I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. You know, they get to choose. Either you cremate or you give them a proper burial. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with trying to bury a child when you shouldn't have to. Yes. So I reached out to a lot of activists to come on board with me and, and help me do the possible because we have no resources out here. 
none whatsoever. None. So I'm hoping tomorrow it will bring awareness of what's going on in the South Suburb area. Mm-hmm. Which we call it. We call it the Southland. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that people, you know, people have been very good. They've been reaching out, and we really need this. I'm glad you started this. And hopefully I'll be able to continue it. It's not so much about the march, because people say everybody march. And I say, yeah, everybody do march. But no one's march for our kids out here. Right. No one's march for the victims that we lost out here. My son's murder is still unsolved. And hopefully somebody will come forward and say, okay, you know, my conscience is following me. Let me tell who did this. Well, I think that. Well, I'm 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 in awe at your strength, at 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 all times because I think to keep going on like you've done is just remarkable. Because I know that uh, losing one child has to be a tremendous heartbreak, but to lose two children. It, it, it's got to be unbearable, and I have so much respect for you. But I remember you told me that you moved to the suburbs to, because you thought your children would be safe there, and um, and found out that that isn't true. That isn't true. That gun violence is everywhere. I had no clue. When Taisa was murdered, we lived in Hell Alfred, nine action. Black. Okay. Mm-hmm. black. Um, but she was killed in Chicago. Um, her first trip out to the movies and she was she was shot by a straight bullet. Mm-hmm. Um being able to afford my own home when I moved to Hazelford, thinking that, you know, my kids are protected, you know, we're safe. And trying to find out we're not safe. <laughs> Absolutely. No my thing is, you know, we all got shot away. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's exactly why I am so in back of you, because it could be your child, my child, next. And um, so we have to really get together and, and, and bring together this unity of protection for our children. And where do we start? We understand that guns don't kill people that people kill people with the guns, but the guns are so easily accessible, just like you said, that they hardly do any background checks. And, I mean, just look at the um, the killings that have just taken place in the schools, uh, in the schools, in the college that was, uh, you know, in Sandy Hook and the, and the uh, the college that was there, um, that the people were shot in. And look at how easy it is to get a gun. We need to make sure... Just what you're doing, just what you're doing to make sure that they cannot get guns easily. And, you know, I, I found a lot, too, that a lot of parents own handguns, and, and, and the young men or women will take the gun from their parents, use them, and put them back like they never happened. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to make everybody accountable yes. for, for their actions, you know. When my son got 12, and I, I did own a gun at the time, I put my gun in and turned it into the police. I did not want to fire uh, around my teenager's son. Mm-hmm. I just did And then, you know, we as parents got to stop closing our eyes to what our kids doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, have to, we, we have to stay on what they're doing for their while. And just be um, aware of what the, our surroundings are. Right. Um, Go ahead. We have, I call them the Y generation because they are the Y generation. And, and I put a question mark behind the Y generation because I don't know why you guys are doing what you're doing or the see mother doing what they're doing. It's like I said before, yeah, their hearts are made of stone. Yes. You know, and but that's a quote from the Bible that, you know, their hearts will become stone and that's yes. what they are. Yes. So how we get that back? How we get that back? Back to the old tradition. Absolutely. 
You are absolutely yeah. right. How do we get back some of that? Some of the, you know, I was listening to something that, uh, today about uh, from Martin Luther King, a speech that he talked about power and love. And you know, if we do not get back the respect and dignity uh, that we have for ourselves and our, you know, and we don't take back our our neighborhoods and our community, that all of our children are, are subject to uh, the death of gun violence, by gun violence. You know, when you, we're, you know, we can't send them to schools because the schools aren't protecting them. Anytime that you have to be taught, not a fire drill, but a gun drill, you know, an intruder drill, so to speak, uh, okay. That you cannot, your child is not safe any, in the church. Your child isn't safe. We're not safe. So how do we get that safety back? I, I am all behind your rally to bring awareness to it. And the, talk about the bills that you guys are, that you're trying to get passed. We're talking, the bills we're trying to get passed is the HHH. We want to see anything. I'll be in Washington next week. It's in the house with it, but we're just trying to get the bill passed. I mean, it's more expensive than I want to say. Um, the trafficking from city to city. Um, it, it, we're not trying to take away the NRA, the right, right. to own a gun. We're just trying to make it safer for our children. You know, right. um, threat violence. Because you, you got suicide rates, you got. You got bully rates for people killing themselves. You got kids acting in you using a task. Uh, I, I suggest the task that you run from the ground. So if that gun has been used, then they can automatically locate where the gun flow and where it's at. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got tracking devices for everything else that's going right on the ground. Right. Well, that I. Makes me, uh, I was going to tell you that we have 2,500 gun dealers in the state of Illinois. Mm hmm. 785 McDonald's. We have more gun dealers than we do McDonald's. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. That's, I mean, that's, okay. that's really yeah. something. And, and all gun dealers, don't get me wrong, they're all gun dealers are not, not bad. Mm -hmm. Because only 20% of gun dealers are not violent. Mm -hmm. And they have more gun dealers than McDonald's. Right. And so they're, they're, those, those, that 20% are the ones that sell to Anybody, they don't care who you are as long as you come with the money. Exactly. Out mm -hmm. the back door, and, you know. Right. And uh, those... Uh, come after hours, come after hours, and as long as you got money. Because the thing about the gun dealers, they don't care if we shoot ourselves. You know, right. They don't care if the black shoot them. They don't care. Right. Right. Exactly. So and, we have to care. I'm sorry. They're protected by the NRA, and the NRA got, got the money. Mm-hmm. Right. But we have, uh, we're, what you're putting together is powerful. And uh, we've reached out to um, all types of people that could, could help in, in, in that march. And we're expecting a huge turnout for this. Um, so if you have any children that uh, you are concerned about being shot down uh, for no reason at all, then uh, the march is, tell us where the march is. The march will be hosted in River Coast, Illinois. It's, it's the first march that we ever had out here. Mm -hmm. And we're meeting at 3300 West 175th Street in River Coast. And we're walking approximately about four blocks to the River Coast Community Church, where my guest speaker will be John Fountain from, but sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about Father Fraser, but he's going to try to make it. I'm going to have the mayor. He's going to come out and say a few things. Great. Because we, we're trying to come together as a unit. All mm -hmm. the suburbs, we're trying to come together as a unit Great. and try to work on some things to help our young people. Great, and I think that's a, I think that that's a wonderful thing, and I think that's a very needed uh, thing for us to show our our solidarity in our communities and in our neighborhood, and our solidarity for the protection and the safety of our children. And if we don't protect our children, we can't expect anybody else to protect our children. We have to fight for that protection. You gotta remember about. Seven months ago, a young lady and her son was in a gas station in Harvey. Not only did they shoot her, her son, they shot her too. Yes. So 
we're, we're not safe. I'm going to give you the correct um, bill because I want people to support it. Okay. It's the SB, it's the SB 1883 and the HB 3433. That's, that's the bill that we're trying to pass. Okay. All right. So everybody, pay attention to what's uh, to, to the information that's being given to you. Don't just sit by and just say, this won't happen to me because, indeed, it can't happen to you. And um, we need to rally behind her. This mother, I'm a mother, and I, ca I, cannot, I cannot fathom you killing one of my kids, like I said before. And this, this queen, this person is so needing you to rally behind her and to, and to, to get involved in that. Hazelcrest isn't that far. And I plan to go. So if there's anybody that um, we put in our, I put our flyers in. So if there's anybody who wants to go, jump in the car with me. We can ride up there and, and just have, just participate in something bigger than you and something that could bring protection for your children. And um, Delphine, I, I'm so glad that you were able to uh, get on the phone with me. I surely appreciate that. I know you have another call, so I'm going to uh, let you go. But thank you so very much, and I will be uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Sally. I love you. I love you, That's too. Hard. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye. We, we need to be involved in things. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, we need to be involved. We have to protect our children. We have to be good stewards over our children. And we have to protect them going to school. We have to protect them in school, coming home from school. We have to protect them in church. We have to protect them everywhere they go. And, oh, my God, is that a job because the majority of us has to work. And I've said it last uh on last on the last show that I had, there was a young man. He was standing at the bus stop with his baby girl, and he stands there every morning at that bus stop with his baby girl, making sure that she gets on the bus. So we need to have more people that are conscientious about their children's well-being. Just don't send them to the bus stop. You got to walk them to the bus stop unless they're going uh, with several people. And even if you send them in the buddy system, just two of them, they're still being. Um, kill because they are, it's, it's greater, it's more protection if there's numbers, uh, more than one or two children walking to, to the bus stop together, and uh, more parents being out there. This, this, Miss Cherry, oh, I tell you, that's a woman, a pillar of strength, because I tell you, I, I, I don't know where I would be right now. I think I would be crawled up in the bed going, little, 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 if you kill two of my kids. Uh, my God. And I know, mothers, that you have that same feeling, that you don't want anybody to kill your child. Now, there's um, another lady who recently got her, ch her child was taken from her and for gun violence. When does it stop? And we have to make it stop. We have to be building... Um, a community that's b built on trust and, and, and dignity and integrity and so that our children can be built on trust and dignity and integrity. Their spirit can, man, can be fed with trust, dignity, and integrity. And we need to learn and to learn about different people that our children are around. I say that all the time. You just can't let your free, your children have friends that you don't know anything about their parents. You don't know anything about their mindsets. <clears throat> you don't know anything about them. Sometimes we even let our children go spend the night with people that we don't know anything about. And our daughters and our sons end up being molested. And then sometimes you just can't even let your children go spend a night with others because you don't know the people even when you think you know them. Isn't that sad? That's truly sad that some, and the majority of them that are being molested are, are, are being molested by family members. We need to, we need to be very, very, very aware of our children. And, and where they go and who they go with, what they see and what they hear. That's our responsibility. That's our obligation to them is to nurture them and care for them and to protect them and to teach them.
to empower them, to engage them, and to inspire them to be more than uh, just a person in the community, but be a part of the community. We just don't live in a neighborhood. We are a part of the neighborhood. We know what goes on in the neighborhood. Not that we're nosy, but that we're caring. And we understand that there's more power in unity. Unity as this march that she's doing, a peace march for, to, to stop the gun violence and that black lives matter and that all lives matter. And we're just trying to, to bring ourselves together on one accord because the word said, how can two walk together unless they agree? We need to agree on how to protect and keep our children safe, how to keep our communities safe, how to keep our neighborhoods safe. We need to come together as one and walk the road together to bring power and unity into us to our communities and that if we have to police the community or our neighborhood you know I um it's nothing for us to get up and walk around and say this looks safe and, and or this looks out of order and if something is out of order, then you need to address it in the community. If you see mail piling up in a mailbox or newspapers piling up in the mailbox, then you might check with the neighbors next door to see if someone uh, left a message with them and say, hey, we're going out of town and, and just kind of keep an eye out, you know, and so then that someone can say they went out of town, they'll be back such and such. But we need to know about each other. We're not trying to know your business, but we're trying to protect your home and your surroundings because that in, that protects our community, our neighborhood. That's what we need to do. We need to police our neighborhood. We need to help the police police our neighborhood by, by um, gathering together our own um, people that will watch out for us for each other because we are a, we are our brother's keeper we are our sister's keeper and we need to watch out for one another just like uh, Miss Cherry is doing she's trying to bring awareness not just to bring uh, justice for her son but to bring safety for all people's children in her neighborhood and I applaud her I have so much respect for her because she's turning something that has torn her apart into something that will build um, community uh, that will be safe and, and that will have a system of protection that we can help one another. Because, you know, that teamwork works for everybody. So if we get involved with the police and the, and the social groups that's going on and the activists there and the children, we need to involve our children. We need to involve our children into positive things and get away from the gang things and to, and to, and to involve, I'm not saying leave the gang members out, but to send somebody out to them to show that, they, that you are loved by this community and take those efforts that you're putting in together and fighting with one another and fight against a cause because you could be killed too, gang member. That's going to be your destiny, being killed. And then the retaliation, come on, come on. Let's build together a community, a neighborhood where there's safety, where there's love and joy and happiness. Let's build a community that is, is in, um, empowering our youth to be lawyers and doctors, construction workers, teachers, nurses. Let's build the, our children, the, they're our future. Let's build them by inspiring them, by being a good role model for them. Fathers, our sons need you so bad. Mothers, our daughters need you so bad. Step up to the plate and know what you bring to the table that's positive, that's going to empower, that's going to, to, en to enlist people in, in in your circle that's going to be empowering all the time, not negative things, not bringing negativity or he don't like me and that. We don't want to hear that. That's garbage. That's mess. That's not going to take us any place. That's not going to empower us. Bring about the school that's doing something in the community uh, about the GED program, about educating yourself and your children. We need you. We need you. There's a song that says, I need you and you need me. We need each other 
to fight against the, uh, uh, Satan and his demons. We need each other in this community and in our neighborhood and in this world. And peace be unto you.